right? I'll, I'll dig right into it because I want to make the best of the time that we have available and take the maximum number of questions because there can be so many questions after my presentation, right? So today we're going to talk about front end technologies overview. And in case if you guys have problem with the speed with, I, with which I talk, or if there is problem with the clarity, let me know in the chat, I would be checking it parallelly. All right. Um, so maybe I'll start with my introduction. My name is Akshay Mittal, as Mitesh has already mentioned, and also I'm a senior software engineer at NVIDIA. And uh, with this, it might look like, oh, you know, this, this person works in such a probably a prestigious organization and he might be from a good college. But where, as we move through the introduction, you might realize uh, the kind of background I come from. So I have total six years of experience in UI development, which is also known as front-end development or front-end engineering. And I started with my career from Infosys, which I would you know, probably say that it's a very humble background, which I started from. And I would, I would see that many of us, just like me, are from a tier two colleges. Like we are not from IITs and IITs and all, right? And sometimes we feel that, and it's, it's, it's fine that if you feel that way, because this is what we experience in general, but that should not stop us from thinking that, um, we can only go to companies like Infosys, Wipro, TCS and all, although they are not bad companies as, at all, but they are furthermore good companies, better companies, product based companies, or something that you aspire to be. So do not your college or your environment, never let it limit yourself. And as you can see that I started from Infosys, I'm currently in NVIDIA. So maybe I'll talk about it later about my journey, but right now we'll start with the technologies that we have. So today I'll be covering the following technologies. Like I'll be starting with HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, JavaScript, TypeScript, React.js, Angular, Ionic, Electron, NPM, and Git. So let's start. But before that, I think I have some uh, messages. Let me quickly check those. Um, all right. Cool. Let's dig right into it. So before I go to the HTML, let's let's understand how this web is made. All right. So from a front end developers, engineers perspective, we can divide it into three parts. All right. One technology talks about what to show on the screen. The second core technology, like three core technologies, the second core technology talks about how it would look on the screen. Right. And the third core technology talks about what happens when you interact with it. I'll take an example of a house. So think of it this way, how it is made is like bricks and uh, cement, right? How it looks is the paint thing, right? And what does it do is the electrical when you switch on switch off or you play around with the things available at your house and how do they interact? So these are the basic core components of any front end application that we develop. And that's what our base would be. I would be covering a few things around it. And uh, let's start with our HTML thing. So the first thing that we have is called HTML. Something that you guys must have already um, seen, heard, written a lot of times. And something that you might say is very easy. Of course, it is very easy. And this is the basic structure that, that is used to define the application that you want to build. All right. So the brick or cement thing that I was talking about, the basic structure is built in HTML. The full form is hypertext markup language, something that you might already be well aware of and something absolutely nothing new that I would be telling you. And this is like, since we are beginning, I would take something easy. That's why I chose HTML as the first topic. All right. After that, we have the CSS, which is known as cascading style sheet. Uh, I believe the kind of CSS that we would have probably studied till the college level is very, very primitive. And there is so much more that we can achieve in CSS using CSS in web applications today. There's a lot more animation that we can do. Some of you might have already done it. Some of you might not be even aware of it, but CSS has become so much advanced with the third version that we have as of now. And this is used to define how the application would look, what color it would be like how the button would look or how a panel would look or how the text would look, right? Or what would be the color of text? All these kind of things are defined in the CSS language. Why do we call it cascading style sheets? Because there can be multiple styles that can be applied to an element, the HTML element that I mentioned right before CSS. And 
they are somehow applied it on top of each other like in terms of layers you can think of since they are applied in layers like cascade they cascade over each other that's why we call this as cascading style sheet all right now before i jump to javascript i want to take example of one library that is extensively used to develop um, front end applications that you guys can use in case if you want to make some sample application that would help you to rapidly develop an application i'm taking specific this example because this is easy to use for from learning perspective you can find its resource on w3 schools a website i believe most of you would be aware of and that uh, library is called bootstrap so bootstrap was originally introduced by twitter the latest version that we have is called bootstrap 4 so there is a concept of classes in css and the entire library of bootstrap is based on those classes so you just have to identify how these classes work and there are so many good and great examples available on w3 schools that you can utilize to develop small but rapidly those applications now i wanted to focus on that i were use the word library you might have also come, come across a term framework which i'm going to talk about in some time i would also be covering the difference between library and framework again with that house example probably all right the next technology that we have after bootstrap is javascript and parallelly with that i would be covering typescript if you focus on the image you would see that and i am talking about this image i hope you can track my mouse movement the typescript is something that covers the entire javascript and something on top of it you can relate it with the venn diagrams you might have studied in mathematics so like typescript is a super set of javascript but before we talk further about typescript let's try to understand what javascript is as i mentioned about the electrical fittings the fan gets on when you you know play around with the switch that is where the javascript comes into picture where it defines that what would happen when you interact with your web application like for example let's say you go to facebook.com you're logged not logged in as of this moment you put in your id your password and then you click on the button so it's the javascript part of that web application that decides or that takes care of the id password the credentials that you've put in sending it back to the server the facebook server and then showing you your feed or your wall as it is called in facebook right so that's what javascript it is it is the programming language out of these three components html css javascript and with time javascript has become more advanced than it was probably five years earlier one of the reasons behind this was that when the web development initially started we did not really have concept of html css javascript and more or less everything was um client uh, server driven like everything resided at the server and just to give you an idea think of it this way that whosoever um uh, this web application belongs to so they have this computer systems installed at some capacity at some location and those are known as servers but with time the client machines the machines that you and i hold in our hand like the small mobile devices or whether it be laptops or computers they've become strong over time and reliable as well and that's why the applications right now are being built in such a way that most of it is run on client machine as in your and my machine and all this is done with the latest kind of html css javascript code that we write like most of it is driven by our machines like our machines take care of most of the processing so the another reason the javascript has advanced in the last five to seven years is that we have heard this concept of full stack development you might have might have come across this word full stack development simply means in mathematics like front end plus back end is equal to full stack somebody who can take care of the entire application data flow right from beginning to the end now if somebody who we need someone who can take care of the entire application from front to back and if they have to learn so many different languages who are written in so many different ways it would be difficult for them so javascript was advanced it was enriched with the concept of classes that you might have come across somewhere in the past probably in java some more, some one of the most common language that you might have studied in the past and so that those backend developers can become 
it become it could become easy for them to write javascript code but i think that's enough by java for javascript let's go move ahead with typescript now what what was the reason that this typescript came into picture is that javascript while writing it's a possibility that you might make certain mistakes right so typescript was designed in such a way that anything that you can write in javascript you should be able to do that but we would put certain restrictions in place so that any mistake that you make you should not detect it when you write in, run it in your browser but while writing the code thereby saving your time this is just a very small brief intro but in case if you want to move further in web development i would recommend you that start with javascript because that's the most important part of web development but do not stop there please upgrade yourself and learn typescript as well because if you know typescript for sure you would know javascript as well ensure that if you want to become a good a great web developer a front end engineer your javascript should be your strength i'll move to the next slide and in this slide i'll be covering about angular and react where angular is a framework and react is a library before i delve further into angular or react let's try to understand what is the difference between these two terms framework or re, uh, and library right so i'll take that house example again but from a different perspective now think of it this way that if i give you a brick and cement to make a house you can make a house with it but would you agree that it's not in the best possible form there is so much more than you need it like for example you need electrical fittings uh, you need paint and so many other different stuff as well right you would agree that sanitary or something but that house that is made only with brick and cement is still livable though it's not a good life or probably the best it could be but it is the basic structure at least you can make with it right and that's what a library is that with that library you can make a basic structure but there is so much more that you need and that is not available within the library and you need to take it from outside so you take all that outside help and you know bring all these together in addition to that library and that's how you make a great application and that's what react is i'll talk, talk more about react but coming back to the framework part now i called angular as a framework why because this framework is something that has everything within it for example if i take again that house example it would not only have just brick or cement it would have paint within it it would have uh, probably uh, you know all the electrical fittings within it all the electrical appliances within it or you know, whatever you need to make a house like you don't have to look anything outside think of it this way that if you make your own house with builder you, there are so many people you have to contact but if you buy in like some apartment in some society you just have to buy one thing you don't have to look around for different things things of it this way so that's what the basic difference between library and framework is probably which most people are not aware of but i would like you to have understanding of these basic fundamental terms with that we'll start a little bit talking a little bit more about angular and react um maybe i'll start with some of the differences angular is a framework built by google uh, it had a predecessor to it which was known as angular js the latest version is not known as angular js it's called angular uh because there were a lot of drawbacks that was realized and the entire framework was rewritten from scratch and because of that to have the distinction between these two frameworks because they are very different a different name similar but there is a little difference that you do not call it angular js it's only called angular please remember that um talking about react react is made by facebook the company facebook they have made their own front end library which is known as react um then there are other further i would say detailed differences within this but considering the kind of audience we have and the times time we have i will not go into much details from the difference perspective let's talk about uh, the similarities we have so these two framework or library that we have available is based on the component based architecture you might be aware of lego lego is like a brick that you put on top of each other and make something so think of it this way that each lego brick you can call it as component in this language so what happens is that everything that you build in these two frameworks or libraries are known as components and then every component wherever you want to use you put it together like for example when you have those lego bricks you put those together and make maybe make some structure out of it similarly in this library or framework you make those components put it together flow the data between them 
and then make a web application. That is the basic fundamental structure behind it. I believe there might be an upcoming question, um, maybe which framework we should start with. Um, and maybe I'll answer it when somebody asks me. Um, from there, we will move to the next uh, item that we have within our list that the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript technologies are not only limited making web applications. That's not the only, there is so much more that you can do. I have two frameworks for you that you can utilize to make something more than a web application. Let's talk, start with the first one. So we have this Ionic framework, which can be used to make hybrid mobile applications. As in you write the entire code in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you can make a web, uh, um, an, a mobile application that you can run both in iOS as well as in Android phones with just one framework. So one application, one code base, and you can run it on any mobile. And Ionic is one of the examples of framework that you can use to do so. There is another example, probably native script. Native script is another framework that you can utilize again to make mobile applications. And that's not what only uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript is limited to. Like for example, if you want to make desktop applications, then you can use the second framework that I have here. It's called Electron JS. Electron JS is an amazing, beautiful framework that you can use to make just desktop applications that you can, you can run both in, let's say, Mac or Windows or Linux or anywhere that you want. I'll give you one very beautiful example for it. All right. So if you talk about editors, like web um, um, code editors that we have, so you might have come across, maybe you must have come across at least uh, VS Code. VS Code is amazing, beautiful, very, very great. Like the best friend that you can have for web development. And that application, that desktop application is made in Electron JS. Another application that I can give you an example of is, uh, I believe the name is Atom. Atom is another editor by GitHub. GitHub uh, is a website. I'll give you some more idea about it later. But they have also made an editor for themselves, and that is also made in Electron JS. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript is not only limited only till uh, web applications. You can also make mobile applications in it. Uh, you can also make um, desktop applications in it. Another example that I can give you, just like I make a native script, is uh, Apache Cordova. It's another uh, framework that you can utilize to make mobile applications with it. Moving to the next slide that whenever you do web development, apart from the basic technologies that you use to make the application, there are other things on the side that you use that help you to make the application. I gave you one example of VS Code editor that you can use. Please, any other editor, you might be you know, aware of Eclipse, something that you must have seen in your colleges and all. Uh, all those who are not aware of, please start coding in VS Code if you're developing web applications. It will help you so much. Maybe start reading some articles that how can I improve my application or like what more things I can do in VS Code to run my applications. And it will tell you there are so many resources available within the VS Code that it can help you to write great applications. So another example that we have right in front of screen is called NPM. NPM means Node Package Manager. Now let's start with what does package means. So package, think of it this way, that package is an entity that can individually do something. All right. Manager means something that manages those packages. And what are these packages or who does these packages belong to? It belongs to Node. Node.js is another framework that is utilized to develop the backend. Since we are only talk talking about front-end technologies, I did not involve it in the slide, but to give you an idea, all these front-end technologies so that you can run this in your local, in your machine, you actually need Node.js for it. So Node.js not only involves making backend applications, but it also is required to run your front-end applications in your local. Just to give you a small example, or like just to explain why it is required, because whenever you run your application, or like, let's say you make a website, it would be served by a server, right? When you request it on your browser, some server would request serve your request. How would it happen in your local machine? It's the Node.js that provides you that server capabilities. <laughs> Um, Nitish, um, would, would you provide this recording to these students? Just a quick question. Yes. Yes. This recording will be uploaded on the platform. It will be available. Okay. Sure. In that case, Shivam, could you please access that again? Maybe just because, you know, we would like to make the best use of this time. I would, 
you know avoid record you know repeating something that i've already talked about maybe refer to the recording uh summary of list of frameworks and their use here is the summary of list of frameworks and use i am not sure if i understand your question shruti okay so uh, coming back to npm like i was talking that node is something that lies behind on which on the top of it your which your front end application works right <laughs> so okay so node is required there but these node packages how do they come into picture right so what happens is that when you start writing any angular or react code you sh you should have the angular code base or whatever angular provides you to write the application right like for example if you're making the house to make the house you should have the brick and cement ready right somebody has to get it for you right the same thing is done by npm so think of it this way this way that this angular react or any other thing that we use or maybe take about example of bootstrap as well all of these are available as packages now if you want to manage those packages howsoever you want to use them in your application you can do that using npm so npm is that thing that allows you to get any package that you want to use now since you're dependent on those packages to write your application these are known as dependencies so any dependency that you have in your application for that use npm now you would ask sir why would we have these dependencies because there is so much code that is already available on internet that is that you would not like to write from scratch right like if you want to make beautiful applications rapidly would you start writing any css framework or any js framework from scratch you would not do that right if it is already available you would use it and then start writing something specific to your requirement on top of it right so everything that is required by you as a dependency right that is managed by npm and since you should not write everything from scratch because it would take a huge amount to develop anything that's why we use this node package manager maybe let's take a look at the question uh, web 3.0 is also related to front end but if you talk about from a job perspective like from a broader job market perspective these are not the kind of jobs that have openings um you know in that it does not have that mass opening so if you focus on web 3.0 that's great but in the end you know we all are looking jobs right um you know maybe just maybe keep putting your questions i will answer those in the end you know because i just have one more last slide okay so i i'll take your questions in the end just give me one moment okay after that we have another technology and which is very important very important for you to learn is called git now what does git do it is again a supportive technology just like npm like for example when you want to you know uh, let's say you have your code and if you you have it in your personal laptop but let's say you go to for an interview you want to show them that you have all this piece of code that you have written by yourself for practice and here is the proof it's not possible for you to take your laptop everywhere and many places you, they might not allow you to take your laptop right so what happens is that you can put your code on git a website that helps you with git for example you can use github the most common example or anyone uh, of us can use you can put your code there it will host your code and you can share your code from there and that's not the only use for it what you can do is in case let's say you're developing a project with your friend parallelly let's say he is taking some part you taking some part how do you manage that what code you have written and he has the latest code available in that case you host your code or you put your code on github and you both take a copy from it and whenever you make changes you push your changes to the master like where you have your code in the github and that's how you know the code management work it's basically used to manage the code um, so that everybody who's working on it parallelly because you know you work in large teams generally when you work in companies so to manage that code the technology git is used there are other like other uh, technologies as well but git is the most widely used technology for this and that's all i have uh, in terms of content that i wanted to share with you today i would probably open it up for questions after this uh, but in case if you want to connect with me 
this is my LinkedIn ID. Maybe you can take a quick screenshot. People on Windows, you can press the window key with print screen key to take a quick screenshot and you can find it within the uh, pictures folder of your my computer. And this is my URL is I'm available for any kind of questions you have after this session, but let's start with some live questions today. I hope Nitish, we can go ahead with the questions, right? Yes, absolutely. We can start with questions. Okay. okay, perfect. So um, maybe we'll start with web 3.0. It is related to front end, to be honest, it is kind of, but you know, it is much more than that. So like what we have right now, or whatever we are talking about right now is the pinnacle of web 2.0. Web 3.0 is turned in such a way because it is so much different than what Web 2.0 can do. And honestly, it is beyond the scope of this uh, discussion. And I would kind of limit myself to talking not more about it, right? The next question that we have, should we learn any language C++ with DS for frontend? Not at all. HTML, CSN as in JavaScript. And I'll give you one small example for it. For the first three or four years of my career, I, in whatever interview I used to go, I used to always say that Angular or React is not what my strength is. My strength is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, from one perspective, it might sound that isn't it too trivial? Why would someone give you an opportunity to interview? But an experienced engineer knows that somebody who is applying with three or four years of experience, if they have the basic knowledge of these underlying technologies, then only you can work with frameworks or libraries to give you a small example. If a brick layer does not know what quality of brick they have, or if the brick is good or bad, would they be able to make great houses or strong houses? They would not be. So as you go higher, it's not the big picture that they look at. They try to drill it down and see how strong you are in these front end technologies. So HTML, CSS and JavaScript, where JavaScript being the most important, um, and second most important being CSS and HTML has like the least important out of these three. But when I say least, least, least important, it does not mean it does not have any importance at all. It is very important parallelly along with all of those, but it is relatively easier. So the number of questions might be less from a DS perspective, data structures. Yes, it is important to become a good software engineer. I'm not talking about front end to become a good software engineer, which also encompasses front end part, but um, if you're starting from scratch or if you're just a fresher, if you have the time available, uh, please focus first on HTML, CSS and JavaScript and you can do and start working on data structures. But my recommendation would be to start with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, then maybe move on to uh, these frameworks. And in case if you've got some experience on it or like you became some well versed with it, uh, eventually you can also start with data structures and data structure is not limited to any language. To practice JavaScript, you can learn the data structures in JavaScript as well. And this would help you to learn not just JavaScript, but also data structures parallel. It's like killing two birds with one stone. Moving on to the next question, uh, which framework should we do? Cool. So Likit was probably waiting for to ask this question. See, to be honest, there is no such um, a preference I have, I would say, but you know, since you would be learning HTML, CSS and JavaScript, my, you know, I would say that maybe you can start with Angular uh, because it involves all the three files, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But the challenge there is that it requires uh, uh, knowledge of TypeScript. From a second perspective, I would say that you can start with React because you, in that case, you would don't have to learn TypeScript. But the idea is that entire thing over there is driven by JavaScript and you would say, sir, we learned HTML, CSS. Why do not we have any files of HTML, CSS in React? So I would say, you know, you can start with any one of those. To be honest, there is no such preference as such. In terms of salary, which one is in demand, front end or back end? I would say both are in demand, but uh, you know, it's a very simple uh, rule that you can apply anywhere in life. Uh, like demand and supply is a very basic business rule that if the demand is more, uh, and the supply is less, you will get more salaries since backend has been in existence so much more. That's why so many people had time to learn it. And so many people already in the domain compared to front end recently introduced probably 10 to 15 years ago, less people in the field, so much more scope to grow so much more salaries is what I personally feel, but you know, I might be wrong as well. But what I've seen is that uh, the growth that front end has seen is past in past some years, 
that is much more than back end has because you know there, you only have limited amount of growth that you can see right once it becomes uh, you know it 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 plateaus the next one is which one to start learning angular react you know any one that you like doesn't really matter sir as a dot net developer what are the front end technology i should concentrate um, html css javascript for sure but you know that is not the only thing that can help you to develop an application from an interview perspective html css javascript can take you to a long distance but that is but you know if you stay limited to that from an application development perspective from practice perspective for making sample projects perspective you have to learn at least one framework or uh, library with it either angular or react and even find some great resources 